So hi, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Unpacking Possibility. I'm your host, Tracy Stein. And as always, I'm so happy to be here with you today. And today's guest is terrific. I'm super excited to get to chat with him and introduce you to him. His name is Hakeem Bell, otherwise known as DJ Prince Hakeem. He is a, uh, a musical artist. He is a rapper. He is a DJ. He's got incredible music out. And he's also a person who really um, gives back. And we'll talk about that work as well. So, Hakeem, I'm going to let you do a lot more of the talking today because you're way more interesting than I am. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but welcome to the podcast and thank you thank so you. much for being here. Thank you for that cool introduction, Tracy. <laughs> Happy to be here, you know. Uh, I'm so glad to have you. And honestly, I, as I mentioned before we started recording, I've been listening to your music all morning and it's yes. you. it is so good. Wow, thank you. You know, I I love uh, creating and producing and co-writing songs. I have three songs out under Prince Hakeem on Spotify and all the streaming platforms. Uh, the first one is called Royalty, and the second one's called So Impressive, and my latest is called Summer Love. Yeah. It's all so good. Yeah, 80s-inspired music, feel-good music, you know, mixed with today's beats. It's so good. And it is the kind of music I feel like that's kind of like the test, right? That people want to sing it. They want to move. I'm not a good dancer, but I wanted to dance. <laughs> uh, and yes. it seems like music that will stand the test of time. Yeah, absolutely. It would stand the test of times, so, you know, sort of like uh, my, 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 my family's music, you know, Cool in the Gang, their music stands the test of time. So that's my inspiration. That's my, you know, I watch these guys. My my dad and uncles, uh, you know, become this uh, popular band, you know, that, that has uh, lots of hits under their belt. So that's the blueprint, you know, that's, you know, where I, where I get my inspiration and energy from, you know. I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, you really, you have this lineage of this incredible music. You know, your father, Robert Cool Bell, and his brother's um yeah found a cool in the gang and uh -huh. that music absolutely stands the test of time i i've i've loved it for decades it's, it's still as amazing today as it was when it came out it's so good it's so good you know kudos to the cool in the gangs of the world earth wind and fires of the world isley absolutely. brothers hall and oats you know i can go on and on but man chicago doobie brothers i mean sheesh you don't make it like that no more. <laughs> no, you're totally right. Yes. And I want to talk about that because actually your upbringing was so unique because you got to meet so many of the people that you just mentioned and a whole lot of other people. And I want you to talk a little bit about what influenced your decision to go into music yourself. Yeah. Um, yes. So those bands that I mentioned, I, I, I had the honor of meeting all of them and, and perform with some of them, you know. As I toured with Cool in the Gang for ten years, as a rapper, hype man, before I started DJing, and uh, we would tour with um, Chicago and do gigs with Hall and Oates and Rod Stewart and hang out with Earth Wind and Fire, you know, Van Halen, Kid Rock, so many the Gap Band, Morris Day, so 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 many. Uh, man, it's just incredible. And Sister Sledge, you know, um, Elton John. But, but um, yeah, so th that inspired me. You know, I was born into a musical family. So I, uh, I got the bug early and it's still, it's still with me. You know? <laughs> I got the bug early. It's really, it's so, um, it's so amazing. You know, your journey, I've, I've read a little bit about your journey and I've seen some excerpts of other interviews and I, I know that you also hung out with Jermaine Dupri and oh yeah, you know, yes yeah, he. It, what's funny? I met Jermaine at fourteen. You know, I, I'm in my forties now, but I'm timeless. You know, say, you are timeless. You. Say hold you, I'm timeless. You know, <laughs> I, I'm one hundred. But yeah, <laughs> as a teenager, I met Jermaine Dupri, a humble kid, just trying to get into the music business. Uh, and I met him at a convention in Atlanta. He's from Atlanta. 
Long story short, we've been friends since 14, but now he's he blew up. I watched this guy watch my friend blow up to the, you know, to the moon, and uh, and and the same night, my dad got inducted to the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Well, the band, Jermaine was inducted to the Songwriters Hall of Fame. You know, he's sitting right aside from me, so it was really, it was really, really, you know, it really tripped me out. Like, wow, you know, they're getting inducted at the same time. You know. <laughs> Must have been incredible. Yeah, but Jermaine's a great friend, one of my best friends. And, uh, you know, you don't find many uh, humble souls like like, like that brother right there because, you know, know, he has a lot of accolades. His ego could be much bigger, you know. Exactly. And, you know, I... One of the questions I wanted to ask you, because you do have this really extraordinarily um, unique life journey already, and and you're not that old, and you've already had such incredible experiences and met such incredible artists and um, performers. I'm wondering, did you always know that you wanted your career to be music? Or was there a moment like where you're like, I want to do this for my career? I always knew, you know, I always knew music would drive me. Even in school, you know, I, I look back at now, I'm like, damn, I, I think I had ADD in school because, you know, I, I, I'm learning, what's, but I'm always thinking about a song or something else, you know, there's always that would take my attention, you know, away from what I should be really studying, you know, uh, and, and learning. But but um, I graduated high school, but right after high school, um, I... Um, I got a record deal. That's with, amazing. Yeah, 18, 19 years old. So I, I didn't go to college. I went to, the music industry is my college, you know. I got a record deal with a band. And I've been in the music industry since. So so um if uh you know, if it, it's my gift. It's my gift and uh that's obvious, you know, one of my gifts. I'm still trying to discover a few other gifts. Because I know there's more, but music is definitely one of my gifts, and uh, I I I don't know what else I would be doing, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's that's really so great, and it's actually I think it's pretty unique because a lot of people spend a lot of their lives trying to figure out what moves them, right? Because they they do what they think they should be doing and not what they are, you know. So the fact that you knew right away early on that music was your passion and what you wanted to be doing, you know, not just for fun, but like to make your work for the fun, right. And enjoyable. I mean, that's, that's pretty remarkable. Well, thank you. You know, I don't know how my mom would feel about <laughs> get a job, turn that shit down, you know, but, uh, but no, 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 God bless her. You know, she, I know she's smiling down. She's so happy. You know, I, I keep it with me, you know, yeah, I keep it with me. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. On, on, uh, on certain occasions, you know, yeah. But uh, shout out to uh, Sakina Bell, you know, and she's um, not to jump, but she she started the Cool Kids Foundation, and uh, and and I'm just uh, me and my brother and dad we're just kind of taking it over from what she started, her vision she had in mind, you know, to help kids uh, in the inner city community. You know, to see how we can help them. And she said, well, instruments, you know, Cool Kids Foundation. We can buy, raise money for instruments because they're the first to get cut in the schools. And that's how Cool and the Gang started. You guys met in school. You're playing in school. You're in Boys and Girls Club. So let's do that mission. So that that leads us to um, the Cool Kids Foundation, you know. And me and you talked about a few weeks ago. Yeah. I am so glad you brought that up because we were definitely going to talk about that. And it's so important. Um, one of the things I so admire is when celebrities use their platforms and their, you know, their star power for doing things to help other people who don't have that kind of platform, who don't have that kind of access. And I love that your family, I didn't realize your mom actually is the one who started the foundation. Yes, yes, yes. She started it, you know, created the LLC and she threw her first event um, in Montclair. It was the oldies but goodies party at the women's uh, country club in Montclair. And uh, it was packed, you know, the air condition was like, wasn't really working right. It was hot in there. <laughs> But she was roller skating, and it was good to see. It was the last big event she had. I think she ended up getting sick the year after. But so uh, looking back on that, you know, it's like wow, you know, that was a good, that was a good time, you know. So, 
So we're on that was a fir- that was the first event, and then we started doing golf celebrity golf outings to help raise the money. And we're gonna do a lot more of the stuff. We're still, you know, we're still fairly new. And uh, uh, a guy by the name of Mark Goldberg, who's the president of O.J. Anderson, uh, an MVP, uh, former M- New York Giants running back. Okay. I mean, Lawrence Taylor played together as the MVP of the Super Bowl like twice. Hall of Fame guy for sure. Well, anyway, Mark Goldberg, a good friend of mine, is the president of his foundation. So he said, Hawk, we've been doing golf, celebrity golf outings for 12 years. Let me help cool kids. You have a foundation. So that reignited. You know, now we're on our third annual, and last year Chris Tucker came, and Ja Rule, and Lawrence Taylor, O.J. Anderson, Kathy Sledge of Sister Sledge, so many people, you know, so many people. And, and we're back again on July 12th at Cedar Hill Country Club in Livingston, New Jersey, for our, our third annual. And a lot of those same people I name are coming back, and more. That's really incredible. And we're, we're going to jump around a little. Yeah. I want you to tell people how they can find out more about the foundation, how they can make a donation, whether or not yeah. they can go to the golf tournament. I don't know if there are spots left at the golf tournament, but people can absolutely still donate. Oh, yeah, you can donate. The website is www.coolkidsfoundation.org. It's coolkidsfoundation.org. You can donate anytime you want, $1, $100, $1,000. You know, no amount is too small or too big. And um, we still have room. There's a reception after the golf outing that we really loosen up and live band and DJs and we dance and give out awards and stuff. And there's still room to uh, play golf. You know, you can play golf with a celebrity. You know, we have a brochure. You can check it out on the website and, you know, um, kind of see where you may want to fit in at, you know. But there's a lot of different options you can play at, you know. That's terrific. Um, and I, you know, you now you'll be out of town, right? Are you coming or are you going to come hang out or what? You know, I'm going to confess something um, uh, just between us and whoever listens. I don't play golf. <laughs> oh, it's all right. Just hang out. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think, I didn't think a non golfer could go. It's not that I don't want to golf. It just, I haven't. So, you know, right. I can't imagine I'm quite all that good. Um, right. Okay. <laughs> no, you can just come hang if you want. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, the photos online, you can see, um, you know, yeah, regular people, the celebrity guests. Oh, yeah. It's like they're having a, a ball. So I'll tell you, well, the Cedar Hill Country Club in Livingston is beautiful. And I believe it, it. You know, people are saying, wow, this is one of the best outings I ever been to. We lay it out, you know, the food, the buffet, drinks on the house entertainment, you know, then that beautiful land to play golf on, you know, and the energy. It's all good, good, good energy, you know. Absolutely. And I'm going to plug your father's champagne. Le oh, cool. yeah. Le cool champagne. Yes. Le cool champagne. <laughs> Le cool champagne.com. Le cool champagne.com. Yeah. He's having fun with that. I got to go get a bottle. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll get you one for sure. Now we have three Blanc LeBlanc, the Grand Cru Rosé. Do, what, what do you, what kind of champagne do you I'm like? I'm not picky. They all sound good. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to send one on up the road to you. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. I'm go- I'll go buy it. It's, it's yeah, uh, I'm happy yeah. to support. Yeah, absolutely. We like that. The first one we gave you for free so you can fall in love with it. <laughs> I'm sure I will. Um, no, I mean, it's just, I mean, you have some incredible stuff going on. I got to ask you a question. Yeah. Because I, I may, I feel like I've read this somewhere, but part of the Cool Kids Foundation is also acknowledging teachers, right? You've acknowledged your teacher and a teacher of yours in the past who was really influential. And um, am I remembering that correctly? No, but we, 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 you know, we love the teachers. There's a lot of teachers I could acknowledge, but no, we haven't, uh, not yet, not yet, but that's a good idea, you know? I could have sworn I read really? that. Maybe maybe I was looking into the future. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 maybe, maybe. But did you have an influential music teacher who really said, you know what, Hakeem, you need to do this for a living? Yeah, it was my uncle, man, Ronald Bell, you know. Okay. My, my dad's brother, you know, and and watching him and, and my other uncle, Amir and Jermaine Dupree, you know, those are my teachers, you know. Hakeem from the boys, uh, Teddy Riley, you know, um, the, watching those guys and really inspired me, you know, 
really special. But I didn't have like a music teacher per se. No, no, I, I took okay. piano lessons after school that I hated to take me and my brother. But but I'm re <laughs> taking them now as an adult, and I'm loving it. And I'm like, I wish I would have started earlier. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, but no, no. I mean, but you have a lot of teachers in life, you know. You just uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of teachers in life, man, for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, like I mean, and, and obviously, you've had some remarkably good teachers. Most of us don't have, you know, music greats, you know, teaching us. So, what an incredible experience! Um, and I love that music is such a huge part of your life in every realm. I mean, you've, as a DJ, you have gotten to play some incredible gigs. And I'm wondering if you want to talk about that as well. Because not only do you write music and perform yeah. and rap, but yeah. you are a very in-demand DJ. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, I've been DJing six years so far professionally. As a kid, we would DJ and produce and make beats. But professionally, it's been about six years and... Man, things are just growing. You know, I, I just can't believe some of the opportunities that uh that fall in my lap. You know, I mean, I work for it. And I'm good, obviously. But uh, yeah, I worked with for the Clinton Foundation, and and I got to meet Bill Clinton. That was part of my deal. I said, hey, if I make this, <laughs> yeah, because my dad was getting my my uncle were getting their Hollywood star in Hollywood wow. on the Walk of Fame the same day. I got an offer to DJ for Clinton in New York. <laughs> So I had to make a decision. I said, listen, I'll do it because this is going to be great on my resume. And who gets the DJ for it? President Bill. So I said, is he going to be there? He said, like, yeah. I said, like, can I get a photo out? They said, yeah. I said, then tell them I'll do it, you know. <laughs> and uh, wow, that was awesome. And I DJed at Carnegie Hall and Whoopi called. She opened up her new store, Whoopi Goldberg. She opened up her new store in America Dream Mall here. I didn't know that. In Jersey, yeah. Okay. They, they called me to, to open up that, so that was awesome. Tori Birch. Okay. Um, a Designer, fashion designer. Yeah. Tori Birch, she had an opening of a flat iron store, and I got the DJ for her, and uh, all the celebrities and supermodels were there. So many gigs. The Bonnaroo Music Festival. Um, that was awesome in Nashville, Tennessee. That's a big festival, three day festival on this farm and hundreds of thousands of people. So, wow, so many. I can go on and on. Uh, last week, 4th of July, I mean, last no, a few days ago, yeah, <laughs> really. July, <laughs> I uh did an opening set for Cool in the Gang at the Raider Shell Amphitheater. And man, that was that was pretty wild, too. Really, really good stuff. So, a lot of good things happening, you know. That must have been incredible. And you also, am I correct, did a Grammys after party with Cool and a Gang. Right? Yes, yes, yep. I actually performed. I was a rapper hype man on that gig. Yeah, that one now that was that was yeah, that was really, really, really cool. Wow. I almost <laughs> forgot about that. Then that was insane. How do you forget about that? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that was amazing. You know, you get to go to the Grammy, you get the ticket, the VIP, red carpet, then you get to perform at the after party. Sheesh. Yeah, I'm, I'm very blessed, man. Very. I don't take any of this for granted, you know? That is a perfect segue to what I want to ask you about next, where you said, I'm very blessed. And, and listen, you're obviously a very talented guy. You've obviously been living and breathing music your entire life. It's in the blood. You come from a family of, you know, stellar performers and artists. But, you know, I also want to talk to you about the whole manifesting thing, because you have really, like you say, you have such appreciation you, and, and you know how great this is. So yes. you feel like you envisioned this and manifested yeah. and that's happening. That's what I want to ask you. Yeah. I, I, yes, for sure. For sure. A lot of, these great things that happen in my life uh, have been manifest, you know, uh, whether it's writing it down or meditating on it, you know, or speaking life, you know, and uh, yes, it shows up. It shows up whether it's a month from now, a year from now, five years, 10 years, you know, it, it, it does show up if you uh, stay in the light. And I try to stay in the light, read the signs, a lot of signs, 
a lot of signs you miss, you know, if you, but you have to be tuned in to catch a lot of signs from different energy can lead you to amazing things, you know. You'll, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. And and I really wish, well, you don't want to, I don't have any regrets, but if I were to um, maybe read the secret book or saw the secret at 14, you know, but uh, it'd have been really, even really cooler. But um, but I'm here now, you know, and and there's no time like the present. But yes, manifestations for sure, for sure, no question. It's, and it always it, it it doesn't always come how you exactly view it, you know. Like I say, I want to play Madison Square Garden after watching Run DMC play it as a kid and and uh, Bon Jovi. I want to play him and cool. I want to play Madison Square Garden. Me, you know, I never played it as a DJ, as an artist myself, but I played it two times. But I was with Cool in the Gang, but I still played it. So it's like you want to play the garden. You might happen one way, but I still touched the garden stage and twenty thousand people and it's roaring. And, you know, it wasn't my show, but I still touched that stage. So that's what I mean. When it may not come how you see it, but it will manifest. I, I, that's a fact, I, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, there's no and question. A quick aside is that I saw a clip of you um, and Kool and the Gang, and the clip is of Jungle Boogie and yes. you rapping, and it's awesome. It's Yes, great. I wish they panned to the crowd, you know, to see that freaking audience, man. But I, that was <laughs> that was on a Van Halen tour. Who would think Kool and the Gang and Van Halen would go on a 50 City tour? But David Lee Roth wanted them. And he told Eddie and, and smart uh, guy. <laughs> his brother said, he's like, what? You want who? The cool in the gang. This is what I want. I just watched them on Glass and Berry. We used to cover their songs when we were coming up and watch. And he said, okay, Eddie. You know, it's the reunion tour. So everyone had to, you know, work with each other. But but it was awesome. It was awesome. Shout out to Van Halen. And uh, God, Eddie, Eddie passed away. I got I got to spend a lot of time with those guys, you know. What an incredible experience that must yeah. have been. Yeah, then after that, the crazy man, Kid Rock, called the band. Hey, I saw you on the Van Halen tour. I want you to come on tour with me for this summer. So that was pretty wild, too. It's like one door opening to the next door, to the next door, to the next to the door. Next, to the next, right. I love how you bring up such an incredible point about manifesting, you know, because even though I'm a psychologist, I talk about manifesting. I have my spiritual side and I know you definitely have your spiritual side. So, you know, I'm glad we're talking about it. Um, But you're exactly right. Like, I feel like if we get so attached to something having to happen exactly this way or we don't want it, we miss out on so much. Sometimes it comes and it's packaged differently from what we would have thought of. And it can still be great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like how you said that. It's packaged differently, and it could still be great, you know, still be great. But, but and also like for DJing, for an example, um, you know, no DJ really likes requests all night, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, some of them could be annoying. But you know, and this is just—I mean, so many things have been manifest. But but but, sure. but this is just listening to, um, you know, follow, you know, staying in light, following signs, and. You know, so, but sometimes I swear these requests come from somewhere else because it'd be the perfect request. <laughs> you know, I'll say, all right, what do you want here? And they say, I said, wow. And it'd be the perfect time to segue into that sound. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, I, I, to me, that's just being tuned in, you know, but, but so many, I have so many stories like that, whether it's meeting someone and that can open another door or, um, you know, uh, you know, a bunch, a bunch of stuff like that. You know, well, absolutely. I mean, even just the Clinton Foundation story completely makes sense to me. That you're, I mean, it was an opportunity that felt really exciting, and you wouldn't have thought. It's not like you would have thought to be like calling and being like, "Hey, <laughs> do you want me to DJ?" So it kind of right. came to you. you it know? came to me. Yes, yes, right, right. A lot of these gigs just come to me. You know, for sure, for sure, absolutely. Carnegie Hall. I mean, yeah. amazing. Yes, yes. The after party for the Carnegie Hall Notables. It's a, a group at the Carnegie Hall. And uh, they called me to do their parties in Carnegie Hall. And that was just like, wow, wow, wow. You know, and relationships are everything. But, you know, you, 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 you get relationships by uh, your vibration. You know, you yes. attract what you vibrate. So 
So I have the best relationships. I have the best relationships in the world, and, you know? And it's just, uh, yes, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm making so many more relationships, you know? No, oh, absolutely. Um, you know, and you, we were talking a little bit before we started recording, and you you brought up some people who've been influential and you're kind of noticing the signs and you're talking about your vibration. So Michael Beckwith, you mentioned and Eckhart Tolle and I, yeah. I forget who else you mentioned, yeah. um, but you mentioned things like the secret, but really kind of, um, I, you know, I know it sounds so corny when I say like, okay, raising your vibration, but like when you do it, you know how it feels right. Where you feel yeah. like, okay, now I get it. Oh Yeah. Yes, yes, you, you you feel it, and once you start seeking the light, you know it it'll show up. You wake up, you know, you put your crown on, your light, <laughs> and you just follow the light, man. It'll guide you. It would truly guide you, and 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 meditate and listen to your your inner voice, and you know if you uh yeah if you seek it, it'll find you, and then you'll notice your circle changing, you hear conversations different, you read people different, and you know. If you walk in a room, if the energy's not right, you know, you know, you just vibrate on a whole another level. That's what works for me. <laughs> Absolutely. And if it works for me, I'm God's child, just like everyone watching this. Why won't it work for you? You know, so But Michael Beckward and Eckhart Tolle is just oh, those guys are major powerhouses with and staying in the light and stuff that they they sharing their gift, you know. I mean, if you don't get anything after listening to these guys, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to, I don't know how I can help you, you know, <laughs> maybe it's just not for you, you know, I guess there's light and there's darkness, you know, I, I choose the light, you know. And I, and I, and I get how everybody kind of has to find their own particular path. You, you Absolutely. Made joke, you made a joke before, but I'm going to ask you more about it that you, you said, oh, I wish I had read stuff like this when I was like 14, because imagine how much easier everything would have been. Or, and, you know, I think all of us have that thought, too. Right. But we come to it when we come to it. Right. Yeah. 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 Just the level of maturity. But, you know, uh, you know, you're 14, you know, I'm just saying, if uh, <laughs> you know, it's just, I, you know, as far as um securing and and nurturing a lot of relationships people i met at that age you know growing up from then you know you know i was a not a crazy kid but yeah i was wow having fun you know <laughs> you, you don't know what's going on but i just say that to say if, if there are any teenagers listening or watching this like you know find your find your light find your tribe like now <laughs> find it now you know and keep yourself around good people and I love that you talk too about meditation because meditation doesn't have to be this thing that's perfect, right? I think sometimes people think like, oh, if they're not able to keep focus perfectly, especially teenagers, right? It's so hard for them to keep focus on, you know, their breathing or sit in stillness or, but it's, you know, it's okay for it to be perfectly imperfect, right? Yeah, you I know? like that, yeah. But you're so right that like, you become more aware of what's around you. Yes. And more tuned in. Yes, yes, for sure. For sure. Hold on, I hit the, I hit the wrong button. Can you see <laughs> me? A, I can yeah. see you perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, um for sure, for sure, you know. Um so my parents were uh, raised us in Islam. Okay. And, and and that played a important part in uh my uh, spiritual connection to the universe as well, you know, because Islam teaches you peace and being still and you're praying and you're going to the mosque, which is similar to church, you know, and, and you're, you're around the other spiritual people. So that helped me stay grounded as well. As I mature, you know, I, I kind of, you know, develop my own spiritual path, but uh, much love and respect to Islam and all the religions, but uh, I love Buddha Buddhism too, a uh, certain aspect of Buddhism, you know, and a lot of stuff that they uh, teach as well. So, yeah, but that definitely, uh, religion does help, uh, you know, having faith in something, you know, and a higher being does help help uh, me stay connected and, and realize how, how uh, you know, powerful the, the, the universe is, you know. I love that you're talking about that. And I love that you're talking about how 
your religious upbringing um, kind of really set the stage for your own spiritual path and your growth. And it sounds actually that it's just, you know, your spirituality has um, grown to include other ways of um, thinking about life and God and, and yeah. along the way, but that your foundation really has been Islam. And I think that's wonderful yeah. that you're talking about that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I got, you know, to who I am, I have to, you know, I thank my parents for that. But yeah, but the foundation was Islam, you know, they converted and, um, you know, I guess they were trying to find some spiritual path as well, which is awesome. And if you listen to Kuna Gang's early music, you know, it's real, I'm talking about the 70s, uh, it's real, real spiritual music, really, really cool, funky spiritual songs. And then in the 80s, they got more commercial and crossed over, you know, different, but, but the, um, the Jungle Boogies and Chocolate Buttermilks, I mean, so many songs, Winter Sadness, Sea of Tranquility, Higher Plane, I mean, listen to some of the titles, you know, um, really, really, really spiritual, spiritual uh, music, so. I yeah. love that. I think that's great. And I think people actually listening are going to go back and listen to those songs and hear them in a new way. As they should. Uh, check out Summer Madness. It's, it was in the, uh, the Rocky One and, the, and um, a big singer in Rocky One, a song called Summer Madness that um, Will Smith and Jazzy yeah. Jeff end up sampling yep. when they first Grammy to a song they called Summertime. Right. They lifted the music from Summer Madness, so. I remember. Yeah, kill a tune, kill a tune. That's really, I mean, there's there's so many um, rich anecdotes that you have. I mean, we could be actually talking all day because there's so much that you, you know, have um, in your in your history and in your memory bank, and it's just fascinating. It really is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, interesting. For sure. No, for sure. Do you have a favorite band other than Cool and the Gang? Oh, so many. It's hard, you know, when they say it. <laughs> it's, it's so, you know, because I listen to so much music. You know, I love Coldplay. Um, I'm a big Bon Jovi fan, you know, Run DMC, uh, Jay-Z, Kanye. But bands, Earth, Wind & Fire, I would have to say. Maybe Earth, Wind & Fire. Yeah, Hulk. amazing. Yeah, Earth, Wind & Fire band. is pretty, pretty tough. Coldplay, too. I, I really like Coldplay. Um, Both kind of timeless. Their music, I timeless. think, endures, right? Yeah, there's a cool band out of Ireland called The Script. They haven't put out any music recently, but their songs are written like amazing, man. They're called The Script, you know? Okay. Really cool band. You Definitely know? want to check that out. Yes, yes, check them out. Do you have a favorite Cool in the Gang song? I don't know how you would narrow it down, but I wonder if there's one that's like your go-to that you're like, oh, I, I, this is the one I listen to most. Yeah, they, yeah, it's tough. There's so many good ones. But in concert, my favorite song that they perform, if you ever get a chance to see the band, definitely go see them, would be Get Down On It. Oh, such a good song. Yeah, yeah, it would be such Get Down song. On It. Such a good song. I want to also, as as you know, I, when I checked in with you before, I definitely want to include one of your songs um, in our interview. I'll add that in. Which one do you think is the perfect one to add into this interview? Um, I like So Impressive. Okay, that's such a great song. Yeah, I like So Impressive. Royalty's good, too. But, uh, They're all good. Yeah, maybe So Impressive. <laughs> okay. Royalty. It's up to you. All royalty. Ro yeah, okay. There, you. People won't be able to stop singing it, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Thank you. No, it's so it's so good. You're very talented. Um you've I think you've already described your style. I know you said that the 80s is a huge influence on your musical style. Yes, for sure. Love the 80s music. Love it, man. It's like you know, uh, you know, it was a time where, you know, it was just feel really feel good music. You know, with 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 instruments and 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 bridges and chord changes. You know, and intros and outros. You know, it's just not the same. I mean, much love. Listen, I'm not knocking the music today. It's really good. Some good stuff out there. 
but the music that gets pushed to the forefront that the record label is pushing your face, you know, it's just changed. But shout out to Bruno Mars. I love Bruno. Yep. Maroon 5, you know, Kanye's very creative and, you know, some some good stuff. But the 80s, 70s and 80s are my favorite. You know, James Brown, you know, Cindy Lauper, um, oh, man, Blondie. I mean, geez. Oh, yeah. Forget about it, you know? Again, that's why it's still around. That's why people still listen to it and enjoy it as much. Michael now. Jackson, Prince. Yep. My yep. God. Oof. Absolutely. Madonna, so, you know? <laughs> really. It's hard to come up with a bad one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they were putting it down. Absolutely. Um, I'm just taking a peek at some of my questions. I won't pepper you with everyone because I don't want to drive you nuts with all my questions um and i think there's a lot actually that we have covered so you have teamed up with uh vocalists by the way that are also really great i um yeah walter anderson yes yes so very good yes yeah, so walt's really good. An amazing songwriter amazing talent this kid plays every instrument and um, what a great, what amazing town. And Walt Anderson, definitely check him out. But he's featured on two of, two of my songs, Royalty and So Impressive. Mm-hmm. Really and, good. Yeah. And I want to do more with Walt, you know. That would be like great. More songs with Walt. I would be your first listener. <laughs> ah, I love it. That's so cool. That's so cool. I love it, too. I think it's great. Um, let's see. I think we've covered a lot. Um, I guess, do you, you know, I know you're really busy, so I don't want to keep you, but a message that you have for young kids who really are passionate about music, want to do more with music, and maybe, you know, don't get the kind of encouragement that you had. Because, you know, I, I looked at the website for the Cool Kids Foundation, and I thought there was a there was some paragraphs in there that I thought were so spot on. You made a joke about it before, like your mom saying, Oh, get a job. But obviously, you know, your mom loved and supported you. Yeah. But, you know, what about kids whose teachers or parents don't get it? The whole music thing. What do you want to say? Yeah. Um, well, listen to your parents, you know, and maybe explain to them that you, first you have to recognize if this is, really what are you in it for you know because a lot of people that has access you can make music so easily now that everyone's doing it and everyone doesn't have talent so <laughs> i would say but you could make it you don't have to be so talented to make it these days and that that's what to me is hurting the industry but it's all about numbers and tiktok so you know that's what these record labels are following but to have a co be a career artist 40 50 years later I think you have to first recognize you, ha if you have a gift, if this is your gift. And how do you do that? By, um, you know, whether it's songwriting, because uh, there's different ways you can break into the industry. All, everyone doesn't have to be Michael Jackson or Justin Timberlake. You know, you can be a songwriter. You can be an a A&R. You can work for a record label. You can work promotions, radio. It doesn't always have to be, I want to be this rapper, you know, and blow up. But uh, if you are want to be this, if you do want to be a rapper that blows up, then I would say study the greats, you know, study the greats like Jay Z and Nas and Eminem, you know, these guys that are impeccable songwriters, and just try to be great at, at what you're doing, and 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 then go out and perform and put your music out, and you'll know your feedback, and you'll know, and it takes time, you know, put 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 some years into it. Don't think it's going to happen in three weeks, but put some uh, time into it. And um, I think you'll know if you have a gift for this or if you have this incredible voice, you know, if you're a singer or this incredible rap skill or incredible songwriter or incredible guitar player. Maybe you can go on tour with a band, you know, and become a um, a band musician for a backup band. You know, this guy's I've been with my dad for over 30 years just playing wow. a guitar, you know, so you can make a living. But I would say just see if you have a gift and... Uh, Get in touch with me, <laughs> and I'll give you my opinion. If I, I give you my opinion and see if you have the gift or not, and if you do, I'll sign you up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you're gonna get too many people sending you all their music? Yeah, you're gonna be yeah, sorry yeah. you said that. Yeah, that's funny, but but find your gift. You'll know, you will know, 
And if it's not your gift and pivot, pivot to something else. You know, everyone's not gonna, everyone's not gonna make it in the music industry. It's just the odds, you know, but everyone could put themselves out there to see the feedback because you you can do it tomorrow. You can make a song, you can upload it tomorrow, promote it, and you start getting one fan at a time, you know, take and build your army up, you know, because that's what the record label is going to respect. Does this person has an army of fans, potential army of fans and followers that we can partner up with this person? Because it's not about talent anymore, just having this incredible voice and, oh, sign them up, that's done. You got to have the numbers, the fan base, and they want to see... um what do you call it? Um, you know, data. Yeah. They want the metrics. Yeah. They want to see the metrics and data. What yeah. about the kids who just love music and just want to play it and just want to create music because it moves their soul? And I don't know, maybe they'll become professional musicians and maybe they won't. But I feel because I feel like music speaks to the soul. Someone's ringing my bell. Can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. No, of course. And if you need to get it, that's totally fine. I'm trying to text them. Come on there. I left the door open. I'm sorry. That's okay. This is the era of working from home. So it happens all the time. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Okay, sure. So what, what I was wondering is for kids who maybe, you know, they're not going to be the world's um, most famous musicians, but they just love music and they just want to learn to create music or play music because it, it, it moves them. It, it feeds their souls. Yes. Um, I say, pick up that instrument, that guitar or whatever's feeding your soul and take lessons, you know, take lessons, join, uh, you know, here in Montclair, we have the, Montclair uh, Jazz Festival and they have jazz kids, you know, these kids are amazing. Like, seek and you will find, you know. Uh, you could take lessons over Zoom. You know, um, yeah, there's no there's no excuse on why you can't move the needle on whatever you want to do, you know. Find a mentor. I have so many cool mentors, you know, and I love mentoring kids if they listen, the ones that listen. But, uh, yeah, I would say, you know, just... You know, seek, man, seek. Yep. And contact me. I'm telling you, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you if you got it or not. I'm not responsible if you get a zillion people contact. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, Kim, it was so nice to get to chat with you. This is, you know, we've seen each other before. This is the first time we've actually had a conversation. It's been so enjoyable to get to you know, learn more about you today. Where can people learn more about your work if they want to find out more about you? So I have a website, djprincehakeem.com. That's djprincehakeem.com. And um, all of my social media, you can find me from my website. And um, yeah, you can contact me via my website. That is so great. And yeah. again, I wanted to just thank you again for making time for me today and to be on the podcast. It was so nice to connect with you. I will put the um, info about you and the Cool Kids Foundation in the in the show notes. But again, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you, Tracy, for having me. Let's grab some tea soon and I'll get you a bottle of La Cool. <laughs> the first of many. The rest I'll buy. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been another episode of Unpacking Possibility with Dr. Tracy Stein. If you like the episode, please remember to like, share, and follow. And now enjoy So Impressive by Prince Hakim. Feels real good out there. You're listening to Royalty Radio. I'm your DJ. I'm your DJ. I'm your DJ, Prince Hakeem. You're a work of art. From the moment I laid my eyes on you, I knew. Yeah. Picture perfect. 
Like every inch of you, Picasso took time and drew. There's no one like you, baby. It even seems the air you breathe just can't wait to be available to you. I've never seen nothing like it. And the very ground you walk on just loves to take you where you're going to. Everything about you blows my mind. You're that surely. So impressive, so impressive. Damn. Extraordinary girl, far from ordinary girl. So impressive, so impressive. It's so impressive. Damn. You're unforgettable. Ever since I met you, I just can't keep you off my mind. Oh, no, no. And I'm gonna keep you close. Cause the gem you are is rare and hard to find. Ain't no one like you, babe I'm digging how you got your own You don't need someone to make you who you are Oh, oh, baby, you don't need me I've been watching from a distance But trust me, I won't let you get too far Cause everything about you blows my mind Shine. I give you what's mine, mine at the drop of a dime. Damn. Number one above nine, oh girl, you so fine. So fine. Top of the line, a little life for the doing with flavor, babe. I hope so, I hate to see you fade away. I hope so, I hate to see you fade away. Everything about you blows my mind. Extraordinary, extraordinary girl. girl. Ordinary girl. So, impressive. so impressive, so impressive, so impressive. So impressive. Impressive, girl. So impressive. 